Hi, it's Dan Veal here once again, and you are watching Base Gear Magazine. And in this video to accompany my written review, we are looking at the brand new Court Modern 4 Base. There's a lot to cover, so let's get on and look at the details straight away. Here's a close-up view of the body, and I know that you're dying to hear more about some of the features on the instrument, but let's head on up to the headstock and then work down the instrument and come back and listen to some of the tones that this gorgeous looking instrument can produce. The Court Modern is available in a five string as well, but we are looking at the four string today. And up at the headstock end of detail, we have the Court logo. And as I flip the instrument over, we can see that we have four lightweight hip shot tuners. These open gear tuners are super, super accurate. And we're seeing these appear on a lot of modern instruments now, favored because they are lightweight. And of course, tuning stability is something which is very, very important to us bassists. Whilst we're here, we can see that the neck of the bass is this lovely darkened wood. We have got a roasted maple neck. Flipping the base over, we can see that not only have we got a roasted neck, we also have a roasted fretboard as well. Coming down from the 38mm nut here, which is, I guess, a jazz based style profile, we can see that we have block markers on the face of the neck. And on the top, if I roll the base over, I'm just going to have a little look in my monitor screen here, just to make sure that we can see we have dot markers but these little white dot markers are actually lumen lay so using a torch or the light on your smartphone you can charge these up and they glow in the dark so if you're on a darkened stage you can actually see what you're doing i like this because it means no batteries for leds or anything like that it's just one less thing to worry about and if you don't need to charge them up, then of course, no torch needed. On our fretboard here, we have a 22 fret neck. And as I run my fingers up the edge of the fretboard, it's very, very tidy indeed. So I've not got any sharp edges and nothing's really sort of rubbing against my fingers. So it's a very, very nice touch indeed. 38 millimeter nut means that this jazz profile also feels nice and skinny down the neck as well. And if I roll the bass over again, let's pay attention to the profile, the carve of the bass neck. You can see that it's slightly rounded, but it also feels nice and small in the hand as well. So it's not as if I'm grabbing hold of a, a massive cricket bat style bass neck here. And whilst we're admiring the bass neck, we can also see that we've got a satin finish on here as well. So for those who find that glossy necks are sticky, um, especially on hot, sweaty nights, now that the summer's coming around, then you're going to be super, super comfortable here. So yet another thing to tick off a really nice addition to this instrument. As we come down the bass, as I said in my intro, I know that you're dying to see some of the details on the body as well. And we really are being treated. So let's go and have a look at that as well. Coming down from the 34 inch scale neck here, we are treated to this absolutely gorgeous looking body. The top on this instrument is Poplar Burl. And we have a vintage natural finish here and it's satin, which feels very organic and really, really tasty. The modern model of basses, as I said, the four string and the five string, also come available in a charcoal gray finish as well, which looks really, really nice, especially with the roasted um, maple neck. If I flip the base over, we can see that the back looks pretty amazing too. Now there's quite a lot going on here because what Court have done is in order to get the weight of this instrument down, and believe me, this is a light instrument, instead of carving big holes in the woodwork and making hollow bodies, 
they've been a little bit clever about the construction of the body. We have a soft maple centre here, which the bridge and the neck are attached to. And the wings are polonia. However, what court have done with the burl top is actually treated the back as well. So this wood that we're looking at here and here is actually white ash. Now I'm going to swap the base angle around again and I'm going to try and show you the butt end so you can see where all the pieces come together. Hopefully from this angle you can see that we have the maple center section. Here's our paulonia. We've got the white ash here. We have got our poplar burl. And if we look very, very closely between the top and the body, we can see that we've also got a stripe of walnut as well. So we really have a wonderful selection of woods here on this base. And as I said, the net effect is that not only does this base sound really great and resonant, but it also is really light as well. On board the Court Modern bases, we have Nordstrand pickups, and these are the big singles. These are well known for just being great sounding pickups, and they have a big tone. Incidentally, I am recording straight into my door through a channel strip plugin with just a little bit of color. EQ cut and boost, but so little, this bass really didn't need it because it sounds great off bat. Let's get on and listen to some of these pickups and then we'll look at the electronics. In my introduction, it was all on both pickups and they sound like this. I was digging in a little bit there and a little bit of fret buzz, just giving the bass a little bit of grief and seeing where it takes us. Front pickup alone, we have got a volume and a volume control for each pickup. So I'm going to turn the bridge pickup down and this is what the front pickup sounds like soloed. Moving over to the back pickup, we're going to turn the rear volume up and the front volume down. And I'm going to play actually over the bridge pickup as well because I want that more biting tone. <laughs> We can hear that there's a wide range of tones even by soloing each of the pickups and that is absolutely superb. This is the kind of thing I'm looking for on an instrument. I tend not to want to switch between lots of different instruments in a performance and I like to have one that I can feel really, really comfortable with and get some different sounds from it depending on the kind of music that I'm playing. As I switch cameras, we can see that not only have we got a master volume and a master volume, we also have a passive tone and a pull switch on the passive tone, which brings in the active EQ. This is a mark based preamp. So not only do we have a really nice set of Nordstrand pickups, but we also have a name brand providing the EQ system as well. Bass, middle and treble is an active circuit. So what I'm going to do is dial in a few quick sounds and then we'll listen to the passive tone as well. Okay then, so both pickups on. I'm going to scoop out some mids boost up those bass frequencies and pull back the treble a little bit and we'll listen to a little bit of finger style.
Let's go for a bit of slap style with the same EQ setting. I'm going to try and see if I can get a P bass type sound out of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the front pickup. I'm going to start boosting up those mid frequencies a little bit. Let's pull the bass down a little bit and play something similar. Let's see how it copes with slap. Now I'm a bit of a fan with playing with a plectrum, so let's have a listen to that as well. A really nice round tone there as well. It sounds woody, it's got character to it, and I think one of the things I'm looking for is a sound which will stand out of the mix nicely when needed, but actually with the EQ I could pull the mids back a little bit and then just sit in and have a nice rumble in the background. Whilst I was experimenting with this instrument to see what tones I could get out of it, I was really surprised that I could tune down really low and actually still get a really good sound out of the instrument. The bass is supplied with Daddario strings as stock, and I've tuned my E string down to C, and I got a really strong, good tone, a note out of it. Finally, as we move back to my close-up view, we've got a passive tone control here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the bass into passive mode by pulling up the control. And then we've got a passive tone, as we'd expect. So let's have a little listen to that as well. Both pickups on. Let's go uh, all the way back. So I've pulled the passive tone all the way down. Let's pull it halfway around the dial. And then finally, something similar with the tone control all the way open. I'm really impressed with the vintage tones out of this instrument. By putting it into passive mode, it's kind of what I really want a jazz bass to be. And we have all these extra features on board as well. And speaking of features, let's just round off the body and have a look at the hardware. Down at the butt end of the instrument, we have this really nice chunky bridge. This is the Babix Full Contact Hardware Bridge. 
This is a really, really interesting piece for me. And I think this could be the first time that I've actually played a bass with one of these on. And what I find interesting about this is that rather than having bass saddles sat on grub screws, if I turn the bass over a little bit, I'm hoping that you can see that the whole saddle is in contact with the bass bridge plate. This also means that the saddle is therefore in contact with the bass body because they're all touching each other with as much contact as possible. The saddles are adjusted and they're more of a cam shape and as you rotate the cam then the action will go up and down but they sit inside this saddle piece. If nothing else, I just think it looks really tidy. That's a really, really nice piece of engineering there. So not only have we got a really nice bridge, some great pickups, we've also got the Mark Bass preamp. Up at the headstock end, we've got hip shot tuners, roasted neck, lumen lay inlays, What's not to love? I mean, this bass is, I would say, serious value for money. And finally, rather than covering, covering up this body top with a solid pit guard, we've also got a clear guard here, so you can actually see the grain through that as well. But obviously, you're going to protect it from any serious uh, hitting, I suppose, when you're doing um, slap bass or playing with a plectrum, and you're going to get a bit of protection there as well. So there we go. A very, very quick whistle-stop tour of the modern 4x court. For now, though, whilst I leave you with this rather gorgeous view, please do check out the written part of my review to go with this video. I've been Dan Veer. This has been the Court Modern 4, and I'm really looking forward to bringing you some more reviews very, very soon. And to play you out, here's a few sound samples of the Court Modern 4. Cheers for watching. See you again.